Hey guys, welcome back. Um, before I start talking about part two of sort of how I, I don't want to say cured, but like helped heal my panic disorder and my constant and continuous panic attacks, I just want to say, please like this video, please subscribe. Sort of the more followers I get, the more like, um, likes I get, the more I can kind of create more videos as in, if it does well, then, you know, I make more ads and then I don't have to take other jobs to, to <laughs> and I can spend my time doing the things I love, which is actually connecting with all of you. So let's um, jump into it. So when I last left off, left off on about this journey, I was talking about how therapy really helped me. Now, I had done therapy for years, so this is sort of like part one of this next part. Also, excuse this mess. I live in a renovation house and um, it's lovely and it's amazing, but the journey is messy. <laughs> so, um, right. I had tried therapy for years. I even did an outpatient program with that was mindfulness led and I think that was like an amazing start to me really diving in but also learning about the science behind panic attacks and anxiety and I do actually think that that is wildly important for your journey um when you understand what happens during a panic attack which is essentially that your body starts to go into panic mode, starts to raise all the alarms, and essentially your uh, prefrontal cortex starts to shut down. Now that's your reasoning. That's the thing that says, okay, you know, like if, you know, if your body's saying, oh, there's a bear, <laughs> that's the reasonable part of your brain that's saying, there's not a bear. You're just stressed about like other things or you know these intrusive thoughts are taking over um there's not actually a bear here your body doesn't need to respond like there's a bear you don't need to go into fight or flight you can relax everything's okay there is no bear um and i would say that essentially being able to understand that was massively important because the way to turn back on your free frontal cortex is by breathing i know this science bit is like a little bit boring um but by breathing we and doing long slow breaths so you know like breathing in on four holding for two breathing out on six so like really forcing the breath and if you're in a state of heightened anxiety this is going to feel uncomfortable it's going to feel weird it's going to even at in some ways sometimes feel more stressful like i have that sometimes where i'm like oh this feels like it's increasing my anxiety but then once it starts to actually flow and work and it starts to your body starts to adjust into it more um you know, which is, it usually happens within, you know, the 10th breath, like your breath cycle or something like that. My body will then like relax into it and be like, oh no, we're good. Like we're just doing some really long breaths. Okay, we got this. And then your prefrontal cortex starts to turn on. Now there still might be like residual feelings through your body, but like the panic attack starts to sort of fade away. And obviously there's still going to be that fear in you of like, oh my God, I've just had a panic attack. Like that's scary. I'm scared. What if it happens again later? What if it comes back? What if this isn't gone? I always say like, be gentle with yourself. Like if you just had a panic attack, like it's okay to sort of like slow down. If you need to cancel something, it's okay to cancel it. Like you can be really gentle. It's actually really, it's a tough process on your body. Your so much of your adrenaline gets just like absolutely dumped um and so you just have so much less to work on like work work with that day um as in you know like your energy reserved like there's less to work on in the sense that it's been depleted um and you know if you're like me where you you shake a lot I get like a full body tremor my muscles are exhausted um so I think the next thing, yeah, like the next thing I would say was, is just be compassionate to, towards yourself um, and, and make sure that you really 
which is again something that was massive in therapy so a lot of the things that i'm talking about right now are going to be related back to like therapy or therapeutic work um so and i know that therapy can be like a bit of a trigger word for some people like some people still which just like shocks me in 2023 because i feel like we've come so far since i was a kid but like still like in 2023 it is such a like big trigger for some people the idea of even going to therapy um or the idea of like having to admit to their family going to therapy or having like i know somebody who is in like our um sort of a, not immediate yeah basically immediately immediate family um who is getting like crippling panic attacks where they like lose days and the only person they've talked to about it is their partner and they've not opened up to anyone else they've not gone to therapy they like they are still mostly functioning so they just won't go and i'm like you know there's something coming up for you that you need to deal with <laughs> um and a lot of times that's what it is it's like so we've had these like brain cycles that are like it, that have been ingrained into us so um there is a doctor called dr joe dispenza and he does a lot of work with like happiness and the mind he does a lot of work with meditation and basically what they've sort of discovered is by the age of 30 i think it's something like 87 percent of what we think and what we perceive has been taught to us so it's not actually even like our feelings it's like things that like society or like parents or grown-ups like even from when we're like little kids and like say we go i don't know say like we're a little kid and like like for me i had like naturally really curly hair um like very similar to like shirley temple and my daughter has it now so like i'm very cautious about the words we use around like surrounding her hair and also about what other people say as well but like people would always go to me and be like boing and it was like it was always just like a topic of conversation and I noticed that wasn't a thing with girls with straight hair like nobody acknowledged their hair but because my hair was different um so it was always like people touching it people like you know doing the like boing like little like bounce back and it wasn't even like necessarily insulting it was just more the fact that it was like unwanted attention and it made me feel other right and i know i'm talking about hair which is like very surface level but it's just like so from that age i associated my curly hair with unwanted attention but then as i got older it was like oh like flat iron your hair straighten your hair this is the way it should look like this is the way it's done in films like you never saw anyone on like the red carpet with like naturally curly hair at that time like you never saw people really embracing that you saw people you know flat ironing their hair or tr like chemically treating their hair and um so i was just brought up with this idea that straight hair was better and my mum, who had curly hair was always blowing it out you know and obviously there are a lot of like sort of like many like i mean there are like sort of like many like race things involved in that like my mom wanting to be accept accepted in like whiter communities and therefore like doing things that were associated with like white cultures like you know not having curly hair or you know like um like my mom would always wear like sun covering so she didn't tan as much like that kind of stuff um because she just like wanted to fit in she didn't want to be different like that kind of stuff but that messaging like gets put on us as like children and so like i said this is like a really surface level thing but like it's about like so what happens when it's like your behavior what happens if it's like so like if you're a kid with adhd and you're like having trouble functioning in a certain way or you're having trouble focusing in a certain way or if you need to use like certain processes to understand information differently or to be able to do your work differently what if you're a child with like um like a difficult home life but the way that that's being received by grown-ups around you or even friends around you is negative like it's not you know people are responding to you with like weird looks or weird attention that you don't want or you know pity and so we internalize all these things and essentially eventually when we don't when we're not 
able, you know, we're children, we're not able to break these things down for ourselves. We're not able to, to, um, know how to heal them. And I don't think that like the generations above us knew how to help guide us into that anyway. So like what happens then? Because essentially we're like left on our own with anxieties and depression and our body is gonna basically try to tell us like, you know, for me, panic attacks are basically your body just like throwing on the blinking light. Like it's it's your body throwing on the light in, in your car saying your car needs to be serviced. Now, if that was actually in our car, we would go immediately and service it. But because we're human beings, we try to ignore it for as long as possible until we get to a point of not functioning and i would say if you're having regular panic attacks you're basically at the point where your car is about to break down so i would say this is where i start to like suggest to people things like shadow work so you can literally go onto like pinterest or google and you can type in like shadow work journal prompts it's essentially just like a form of journaling that asks you sort of like deeper questions so like why it it's like why uh like you know where is a place in my life that I'm really like hard on myself like where's a place in my life I feel like I can improve like why why am I harsh on myself like why you know where is what is something that makes me like deeply unhappy why haven't I changed what makes me deeply unhappy so it sort of like prompts you to go deeper and deeper and as you do that you're gonna find that maybe you have an inner voice and for a lot of people that voice is like I'm not enough I'm not lovable I'm not good enough I'm not pretty enough I'm not this I'm not that and those are not real that's not real that is your brain trying to like I know for me I would say like I'm not lovable enough like I'm not good enough and for me it was a lot of times like growing up with people who you know growing up around abuse or in it like being abused and then like having relationships where people didn't treat me well I essentially like rather than blaming other people would internalize it as like well I'm not good enough otherwise why would people treat me like this and that's like a really like it, it's like a really like sad and defeating thing to think and it's not like I think anyone would sit back and be like well that's not your fault like if you were a child someone was hitting you or like if you had a boyfriend he was abusive like that's 100% not your fault um but you know I think doing this work like one like now I would never allow myself to be in an abusive relationship or like if I ever saw any of those red flags I would never ever be, like I would leave immediately but like at that time like that was how I viewed my worth do you know what I mean like my worth I didn't love myself enough or like feel myself worthy enough to be able to like pull myself out of those situations I just like wanted to love this person I wanted them to love me and like I just thought, okay, that's, that's fine. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, and, um, so essentially <laughs> that's why like shadow work is really, really important because it makes you face those questions. And I would say after I did sh a lot of shadow work, I then started to go to therapy again, but instead of just doing talk therapy, like CBT or DBT, I instead started hypnotherapy which is brings you down to like a really deep level of relaxation through like a sort of form of meditation where you're working within your subconscious so you're getting down to like I think it's like alpha or theta levels essentially basically that like point where like you feel like you could fall asleep but you don't and um and then you start to like rewire it and also using EMDR, which I had used before when I was in the out outpatient program and I felt like it helped me massively. But essentially, like, it, uh, it, EMDR is just a form of bilateral stimulation. So it's using both parts of the brain because both parts of our brain can't function easily at once. Essentially, if you're using a memory and then you start doing the exercises that EMDR does, which is, it's like a moving it's like a light and you follow the light and etc etc um because you 
are doing that essentially your brain can't really function using like those two sides at once it gets confused and it takes that memory and it like short circuits and it ends up removing a lot of the emotions around that memory so or the yeah so or a traumatic event so therefore you can view that traumatic event without like you know very little to almost no emotional pain surrounding it and then you can work through it so rather than it being this like big scary thing that you need to face it just is and um so I would say like hypnotherapy for trauma or like just hypnotherapy for like anxiety is fantastic. Like I cannot recommend it enough. I have an amazing therapist, but like there are so many out there. I live in the UK, so, um, you know, I can't say like, I don't know how available. I mean, I know it's available in Europe. I know it's available in the States. I don't know about the rest of the world. So that is what I will say. Um, but there are amazing therapists out there. There are so many people who do this work. And I think it's just like, sometimes you have to, I think for a lot of people, talk therapy doesn't really work. It doesn't help rewire our brains on like a scientific level. And I think for a lot of people, we need that because we're really stuck in these narratives. We're really stuck in these ways. And um, I think with like social media and so many other things, there are a lot of benefits, but there's also a lot of negatives. And that scroll is just so easy. It's so easy to get lost in that to scroll and feel like shit these days. And um, I feel like this is more of a ranting video than it is a helpful video, but I hope it is helpful to somebody. And I hope that I can, you know, maybe I'll come up with a bit of a guide um, and and talk about it on this page. Um, but I'm just going to keep posting about like mental health and positivity and manifesting and um, faith and how we can kind of all help each other out and be better people um, and better people to each other, hopefully. And um, yeah, that's it. That's all I got today. Um, please reach out with more questions because I feel like I've dropped a load of information without going too deep into it. And um, I could even ask, if you guys are really interested in hypnotherapy, I could even ask my therapist to come on and do a video with me and explain the process. Um, so with that, I say, I hope you're well. I hope you're feeling hopeful and have a great day. See you soon. Like and subscribe.